So today we're back out here in the Hunter Classic, and I wanted to kind of switch it up from whitetail hunting a little bit, and I wanted to come here to Valdebois, so I was looking at my map, and I kind of thought of a route that I've never done before, but I think it might be interesting. So we're going to start up here in the mountains, kind of hunt for Ibex and Ptarmigan for a bit, and then loop down through, and pretty much end up doing a river run, but both of those bear barrels are filled, and ideally, if this goes kind of the plan, I want to get like one of everything on this map. I think there's like maybe seven total species. I didn't count them, but that's kind of just a guess. And if we can get really lucky, hopefully like one good animal of each species. So we'll kind of see how this goes. I've never really done anything quite like this before, but I'm hoping for the best. I think it could be fun. I've been a lot more selective with this than I otherwise would be, because I think Ibex are one that if we really try, we definitely can get a good one. But there's two different ptarmigan here that have a pretty solid estimate. That male is up to 625. And there's a female back there which is up to 620. I'm gonna try to flush them in. I wouldn't be surprised if we only get the one, but I at least wanna get something. And I don't remember if my whistle key is still this. It definitely is. I guess he's just gonna run though. Got the female. The male just stayed on the ground. I can still see him going over there. I don't even know where the male got to. Ptarmigan, I think the males and females can both get up to like the same size, so it doesn't make too big of a difference. And this one's 569, so definitely not bad. And it took both shots there to bring it down. If we get a shot at that male still down the line here, because we've probably sent all the Ibex running anyway, we'll go for it, but I want to at least get up over the hill and take a look. And I kind of figured we're going to have two different opportunities for both Ibex and Ptarmigan. One up here in the north and one we could go down in the south if we need it. So I figured Ptarmigan in one, Ibex in the other if it comes to that. And it's kind of looking that way. So actually, this might have worked out because I spent some time looking. And there is actually a decent Ibex up here. And I had gotten this track of the 90 to 115. And I kind of just thought maybe that could be good. So he's not huge. And he's super narrow. The 190 to 245, that was a weird little animation thing, but gave us a pretty good angle to drop him. And that can actually save us a lot of time, so rather than going all the way down into the south at the end, if we kind of struggle with any of the species and it takes us longer, we don't necessarily have to do that, because this is definitely a solid Ibex. But kind of par for the course with our uh, decent Ibex, he is down in a spot that's not the best for getting a trophy shot. 217 may be the smallest I've ever had with the big curl, but he does pretty much accomplish our goal. As far as Ibex, I just wanted something with the curl, and we did get that. And if we can do well with the other species, we will go down and south. But we're going to work with what we have here and try to get some kind of trophy shot. I mean, all things considered, that's actually not too bad. Got the sun facing him and everything, so we'll be happy with that, especially since he's not huge. And we're going to head down into the river area, so... I don't know if we can get down there without the climbing gear, but I'm not going to go all the way around, so we'll try to find a way, and if it takes a med kit or two, it'll be worth the time save. So we made it as far as the first bear barrel, and it's good to see some walking around here, but literally the only male is this guy, which is definitely smaller than some female brown bears can get, so kind of unfortunate, but I'm actually not 100% sure the 7x64 can take brown bears, so I guess a good way to test it. So if he'll actually turn broadside, which they usually do when they're having their feeding animations. They kind of walk in circles. It dropped him, so I would assume it's probably legal. And yeah, I sat here for like 10 minutes to make sure nothing else was going to come in. And that was it, so not the best. And I'm definitely not going to count that for like our good-sized brown bear. And we have another barrel to go to anyway. But we'll claim him. And the one good thing about still coming down here, regardless of the fact that we didn't get a good-sized bear, is there is a location for European rabbits nearby, so this guy is 22. That's pretty unfortunate. But if we go up through here, we may end up seeing a European rabbit. So we'll try that, and if we don't, we'll have to find them elsewhere. Just in case, since there's a brown bear right beside us that I guess was coming to the barrel, I just put slugs in our shotgun, and it definitely doesn't seem pleased with us, so I think... Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to rear up on its back legs, but guess not. Well, still not a very big one because it was a female, but somehow that didn't get 
brain, lungs, or heart, but got back into the liver, stomach, intestine, despite hitting the shoulder blade. That's interesting. I'm kind of thinking that we may actually change our loadout here. So this may be the last thing that we take with the 7x64. It's a decent red deer, but again, not quite one that I would actually consider like good for what we're trying to do here. And I think red deer are probably the other species that I really think we can get a good one of if we try, so I definitely want to try to get a better one. But the lodge is right there a little bit west of us. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a bow, and I think we're going to keep the shotgun and then just bring slugs and buckshot. Because having it for the European rabbits might actually be pretty useful, so we're going to try that at least. But I say that's maybe a little bit above average for a red deer. I think he's like 180s. Actually a good weight. Yeah, 184. So let's go get our inventory switched around. And hopefully the bow is going to allow us to be a little more quiet and just not spook things that maybe are just around the corner. And it looks like that was pretty good timing because if the last red stag was not the quality we're after, this guy definitely isn't. But, if we can just kind of drop them there silently, it's been like a couple of minutes since we switched. And it's already paying off because we definitely don't want to send stuff running just for that guy. And I mean, he's average, but they definitely get a lot bigger. Doubling them there at about 30 meters. Decent weight again though, 211. He's 160. So hopefully, as we kind of eliminate some of the stags, we start running into some better ones. We're kind of getting somewhere with this guy. 200 to 225, he's actually the, the lowest weight so far. Other than the last one, I actually didn't check, but I'd like to think we could still do better. But I think if this was the best one we got, I could be happy with it. Because I'm gonna say he's somewhere around 210. I'd like to think we could get a 240 if we really try. But just the fact that we're kind of going after everything, this guy's definitely above average. He's kind of narrow, so I don't know what that's gonna do to his score. He's below 200 kg. But he's 206, so I think probably if he was wider, he'd have been 210. So I don't know, I'd like to get a better one. It kind of depends on like how the brown bear uh, barrel goes up here. Because I've seen two walking around it, and they're both females, so... It's not looking the best, but it just takes one. Now that looks a little better. 24 to 27, with a pretty solid weight estimate, actually. I could hear one somewhere behind me. Right there. We'll check and see if that's anything good. Nah, it's just a female. So, when this guy gives us a broadside shot, which I think he might, I need him to stop. Let's see if we can get him. And I'm hoping that's gonna be at least 26. I think even if it's in the like 25 area, I'd be happy with it. Especially since this is the second bear barrel. And there could be another good one around. And I'm probably actually gonna go back into the stand and like call for Rodier and Red Fox just to see if there's anything in this area because the further south we get, the more urgent it's going to be to start to find decent ones of them. So we might as well take advantage of having the tree stand here. But we'll just kind of take our time in case there is anything around. And I think he had kind of like a flat skull on him, which might indicate it's like wider and higher scoring. He's 405 kg, which isn't bad. Double lung and 25.3, so not quite what I was hoping for, but I think for the first time kind of doing this, we'll be happy with that. I think we've probably given it enough time and nothing has come in for either Red Fox or Rodier. So this brown bear is kind of straight in front of us, and hopefully she's going to give us a shot just to take her out and kind of get her out of the way. I think she'll probably stop. Don't know if it's going to be anytime soon necessarily. Just get her taken out there. I've not seen any sign of Red Fox and any sign of a male Rodier. There was a road here, though, like, up by the other bear barrel, but hopefully they're just all kind of down here, because I feel like usually by this point in the river I've seen some of both. But maybe because the game's been open for so long they've kind of moved south. But anyway, a pretty unimpressive female bear, though heavier than the male we shot up north. A little bit lower scoring. Ooh. Well, that's definitely a good road here. 180 to 235. I guess all it took was getting into a new stand. I didn't realize he was that big when I first started spotting him there. That might be close to a 200. There's also a really tiny buck in that herd, but we're definitely not going to worry about that. I wanted to maybe call for Red Fox here as well. We'll have to see how they scatter. 
We're definitely going to get that bigger buck. So the one thing you can usually look at is their bases. And they're not touching, so I don't think he's anywhere near that 235 mark. Because usually that's a pretty good indicator. They're still pretty far apart, so he might not even make 200. But that's better than anything I thought we'd see. Let's kind of drop him there. And I mean, other than those two running that way, any other red foxes shouldn't get spooked by that, so we might as well call for them while we're down here. But this guy is hard shot at 8.3 meters and a 185 score, so pretty much right at the bottom end. But still, like I said, better than what I thought we'd find. There's things in every hunt, really, that I just can never expect. But there's no way I ever could have predicted not seeing a fox for 2 hours and 15 minutes into this hunt. But we finally have one coming in. I'm kind of tempted to shoot it with Buckshot just to try to, like, ensure that we get it. Because he's not a bad size. He's kind of slowing down out there, though. I think we can get him with a bow. I hope I don't regret this decision, but it could, at least, save us a little bit of time. We hit him a little bit high, so no vitals. He'll probably run for about 10 minutes and then go down. So what we'll do is mark the last place we see him, and then we'll kind of just go and hunt in a different direction for a little bit, and then he'll die in some short amount of time. So once we figure out where he's headed... Oh. All right. That was quicker than I thought. So there's actually a kind of cool brown bear over there. I can't remember if the ones that look like this are gold or cinnamon, but if we can get slugs loaded and get close, I kind of want to go get that, and then we'll go and get a red fox and start looking for rabbits. Now luckily, brown bears are easy to stock to begin with, but when they get stuck, it's even easier. The problem is, I don't know that we could have reached his lungs with that rock there. Their hitboxes are pretty finicky. That'll be good enough. Their lungs basically end like at the back of their shoulders, and I'm not sure about shooting way high in the shoulder to get a lung, so figured we'd wait. This guy is a gold fur type. He's far from the best that we've shot, because his estimate is up to like 24. 22 is not bad. I don't know that that's worth a trophy shot. It's not like it's a rare, really. Kind of like a fur type, but haven't seen one in a while. So we'll go and get our fox, and then what could definitely be the most difficult part of this video is coming up because sometimes just finding the burrows for European rabbits is rather difficult, but hopefully we can find one without too much effort. Well, that's about the most useful thing I could imagine right now. There are burrows right here between where we just shot the bear and where the fox was, so we'll go and get our fox and then sit over those. So I'm not sure what to think for red fox. Like, 22 plus would be definitely acceptable. This guy's going to be right around that, actually. Shoulder blade shot, not quite what I thought. 20.7. I guess I'm just slightly off on my math, but that's not too bad. I don't know. Red Fox isn't something that I was super focused on anyway. So we'll go see if we can get a decent rabbit out of these burrows. And then maybe just for fun, we'll fast travel to here and see if there is anything there for Red Fox or Red Deer. And then at that point, I think we'll just call it a video. So I figured with the tree stand being so close to the burrows, it would be a good idea to just kind of use that and allow us to spot them. And then one comes out literally right underneath us. I wanted to get that, and I don't know. There's another one up here somewhere. I don't see movement. Yeah, it's still just kind of hopping around there. I wanted to maybe see if we could get them both, and just kind of increase our odds of getting a decent one, because they're both about the same estimate. I don't even know if we spotted the one underneath us, but they're both up to about 2300. Now this one, we actually would have to make a decent shot on. We hit it twice. It might go down. I always struggle with the 22 pistol and I almost switch weapons, but I didn't. And now I kind of regret that. This one's 1.9, so not huge. There's a very real chance that underneath this burrow, the one that we just shot is going to be laying there. I mean, two hits usually brings them down, but I try to get a headshot because... Exactly that. Sometimes they run from just a single body hit. Let's see if we can maybe claim it. It's not here. Alright, well. Guess we'll wait and see. Well, that's definitely the one, because it's got some uh, blood on its ears, which may very well be why it's still alive, but I'm kind of worried about taking this shot. 
want to make sure that we get it this time. I think it must be a little bit high at like 50 or 60 meters. And I kind of thought that, but I couldn't remember if it was high or low, so just kind of learning as we go. But worst case scenario, that's going to be just another kind of average one. And it had an estimate in a weight that could be decent, so we'll cross our fingers that it's good size. Probably not the best that we had to hit it three times to bring it down, but another 1.9. And I actually forget if it's bigger or smaller than the last, or I don't even know if I looked at the score, but two decent European rabbits. Definitely not going to complain there. And these red deer hides have just been walking around out here, but we will fast travel and see if anything's up there at that other spot. And if nothing is, at least we got one of everything. And some pretty good ones. It's not like we shot a bunch of really small stuff. There is a female fox right there, so we'll at least bring that in. So there could be a chance that a female fox scores higher than our male, although not this one. <laughs> That's one of the smallest I've ever seen. Minimum weight estimate and 4 to 10 on the score. We'll just kind of drop that there. And there's actually a red deer stag back here as well, which probably at this point we ought to just get out and uh, grab our rifle and take him. Because he's kind of far up the hill still. I think he might have got into the trees, but I think it's better than the one we shot. I think at least he's a little bit bigger. And since we have the opportunity, I figured we'd use the 4570 Buffalo Rifle. It's gotta be my favorite sounding weapon in this entire game, but that's both of those down. So at least I think we're improving on our Red Deer. There's no way we're improving on our Red Fox. In fact, that may very well be the smallest I've ever shot, depending on what it ends up scoring. Let's see, I think this guy's closer to like, kind of like two teens kind of area. He looks bigger, so we'll see. Similar weight to the other one. Double lung them, of course, with the buffalo rifle, and yeah, 218, so that's our best red deer. We'll go and get our kind of pathetic red fox. And I really do hope it is just like right on that four mark. It's 3.9 kg, so it'll be above that. Actually got lucky with the spine shot. And 8.6, so... I've probably had them smaller, I'm not really sure. But I'm actually really happy with the way this went. For the first time that we've tried something like this, I think it went pretty well. We might try stuff like this in the future, just kind of a little more planned out. But I wanted to see how it went, and I'm pretty happy with the, with the results. So anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.